Hello there, Sir from 17 once again, introducing you to my Dark Souls PvP Berg Sessions. This is session 2.5, and I'm calling it this because it was uh, pretty much a little session I had in between the next major session that I had. And for anybody who hasn't seen this series before, or who's just new to my channel because, you know, you're deep in Dark Souls and you're, you're just stalking YouTube for any content you can find, uh, I know I do the exact same, especially if it's got commentary on it. I love listening to people talk about this game because they're always really passionate and they're always really insightful about it. And, we all learn together from listening to each other, from our own experiences and for things that we find and we learn. And it's it's really like no other experience I've had in a multiplayer. Like I was playing Modern Warfare the other day and I was really confused because a guy sent me a message saying, you know, good game type deal, awesome performance, because it was a pretty good game. But I was so used to, you know, nobody giving a fuck, everybody being selfish, and if anything, people sending you hate. Because it doesn't happen often, but there's more chance that you'll get hate mail than you do any kind of good mail. So it was really startling to see it. And Dark Souls is completely different. If you're in the Berg and you're fighting like me and this guy are now, you're going to get good and bad from people depending on how you play. And all of it is constructive. There's occasionally going to be some, you know, giant wanker that turns along and, you know, burr, 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 Hornets backstab. What a parry. Look at that. The dude just knew exactly what I was going to do. He punished me. Fantastic parry. But yeah, there's, there's wankers every so often. I showed him my back there so I could grasp. I trusted this guy that he'd let me do it. And he's destroying me there with the range, but I managed to get the clip on my lovely painted guardian sword and it earns him a bow. So now I can proceed to fight the Dark Moon Invader, which is the, the dude up there. But yeah, Dark Souls is its almost transformative. It's one of those multiplayers that I've never really come across. And uh, for anybody that knows me, knows I really like third-person action games. I'm a Devil May Cry fanboy to death. I'm the same with Ninja Gaiden. I'm the same with, like, God of Wars. Uh, I play pretty much all those kind of games, especially when they're deep, especially when they're difficult, and when the controls are, are perfect. And Dark Souls is a very different version of those games, but it, it has unique elements that are very similar. And because of this, uh, the fact that there's PvP in introduced, this is the first game I've played where I can take uh, so much my skills and my love for this kind of game and put it against another human. And I think that's why I'm so deep into it, because like, you can only shoot people for so long, I believe. I mean, I'm not one of those guys that spends weeks on Modern Warfares and Call of Duties and things. I can't do it, mainly because I get too mad. And... Um, I am planning a lot of Dark Souls content, and I know a lot of people are excited about that because it's, it's really doing well on my channel, and I love the fact it's doing well. It's kind of sad that it does better than a lot of other stuff that I've been doing for a long time, but I think that's just the nature of, of YouTube. Certain things will always do better than other things, and you'll get channels that will completely neglect the things that don't do well because all they want is the views, and then you'll get channels like mine where I'm going to do what I want when I want, and the joy of it is if you like what I do, you can come along for the ride. If you don't, you can watch someone else, and you know, that is the awesome part about YouTube. Why spend time leaving hate on something you don't like when you can be using it to watch something you do like? And that is the ultimate mentality to have when watching anything on the internet, or you're just going to get really mad. But speaking of messages, uh, Extra Mike sent me something as this guy's buff runs out, but he knows he's still dangerous because he's packing the red tier stone. I do have a range advantage because uh, the more observant people will notice I'm rocking a longsword. And I've been playing with this longsword for a couple of sessions now, and I do enjoy it. When I first put it on, I was like, Chris, what the fuck are you doing? These weapons are not for you, but it really surprised me. It's got... A diverse move set. It's got interesting two-handed attacks, and the the poke it does. Not only does it get the benefit from the Leo ring, but it's also really useful. But this guy here, Boulder Shield, Wolf Ring for poise, and a shortle. And I know what a shortle does, so I'm not going to make the mistake of trying to block this guy. So I put my Pyromancy on, and as I do it, he switches to a Life Hunt Scythe. But I think, judging by how much life he had, that that guy might be a low-level tweaker. And for anybody who's not familiar with that terminology, that is a player who will get extremely strong with good equipment at a low level to invade players who are less experienced than himself. Uh, don't get me wrong, he might not be that, he might just have super low vitality and have some kind of crazy glass warrior build, which 
on paper sounds fucking ridiculous, but I'm sure somebody could pull it off because there are some really good players. But we've seen this guy before. He's another buff user. And I'm using my Pyromancy, and a lot of people might call this spam because I'm using it in succession, but my knowledge here is if I can trade with him and take damage, my damage will be massive, but if I can hit him with the Pyromancy, it kind of makes it worth it. And the reason I chose to make that decision is because if I didn't, I would be running away from the build. I would just be running away from his, his extremely powerful buff until it wears out, and now I can progress to fight. And running away from the build is extremely boring. And I don't want to do it. So instead, I utilise the range of the longsword doing the poke, and I put him back into red tier stone range. And I think I've already showed these fights, so for the people that are wondering if this is a sense of deja vu, I believe this was on my donations video. Uh, the reason that they're going back up is because they are from this session, and uh, they now have commentary, so hopefully that'll be enough to justify watching something again. <laughs> but for anybody curious to how long this session is, this is an hour's worth of Berg invasions for you guys to enjoy. And this is uh, an interesting turtle that we've got here. He's got a Zweihander, or a Zweihander, as I prefer to call it, because, you know, you pronounce the V like that in German, and it's just a bit more authentic. I'm probably going to backstab him, or poise backstab him, because he's got a lot of defense, he's is, is, is extremely timid, and goodness me, that sword does some serious damage. I should have punished that with a backstab, but I was too late. So, he's wearing, I think, is it the, I think it's the crown of Gwyndolin, which I'm not too sure what properties that mask gives you, or that crown, or whatever it's called, but I don't think it gives you anything that this guy is using, as we do this little pirouette, and I'm thinking right now, why am I not backstabbing this guy, so my, my train of thought must be that he's a, a newish player, and I don't want to completely destroy him with backstabs, because it's extremely disheartening to get backstabbed on this game, especially when you're new because you don't understand the mechanics and it just feels like bullshit every time. So instead, oh no, I'm gonna backstab him. But I did it with, a, I think, a weaker weapon. And I pop a grass, uh, he comes for the attack during the grass, because like I say, he's, he's probably new. And uh, I'm just getting a couple of cheeky hits in and yeah, I've started to punish the backstabs. So, you know, hopefully this will teach him that that weapon has some major drawbacks if you miss. And you might want to try unlocking and doing dead angles, because they are absolutely lethal if you know what you're doing, especially compared to the lag. The lag on this game, guys, people complain about it, but you don't really understand what they mean until you experience it. Like, I've actually just come from recording a bunch of forest invasions, because I've got a new series I'm going to start putting up. And I would not have stopped. I was in such a mood. I was just destroying. I was in a real, real, like, angry forest mood. And I was wanting gankers. I was finding gankers. And I was crushing gankers. And it was all pretty, you know, good and well. I, I might have got 50, maybe 50 invasions. And then my laptop overheated. So that's the reason I'm doing these commentaries. Or I'd probably have gone well into the night with it. And it's a shame because I was in a, a big mood to just crush some people. And that series, I'm going to put a little teaser up on my channel for when what you can be expecting. And it's not like anything else I've done. A lot of people might not enjoy it, but some people will probably find it interesting to see uh, what that type of experience is like. And for anybody wondering about the invasions that are pretty much documenting my rise to playing player versus player, uh, the ones where I'm using my character Ezekiel. Uh oh, what's happening here? Is this guy? Yep. Look who it is! A cameo from the guy before, and he backstabs me like a boss. Then he goes to flat me with his y hander and uh, that guy nearly kills me. As I go for the backstab, he gets cancelled with damage, and you'll notice the red phantom here is actually helping me. Because he's in the Berg. I use a Divine Blessing because I want to finish our duel, and <laughs> he's going to just dispose of him. And A lot of people might think of this as ganking, but... If you interrupt a duel in the Berg, there are rules, and you will get a punishment, so, you know. These people, to me, are the lowest of the law. And unfortunately, I do think the Berg is going to get worse, because a lot of bad players are coming here to gank, a lot of bad players are coming here to, to twop people and backstab or spam spells and things. And it's very sad, but, you know, they polluted the forest, they polluted the kiln, now they're polluting the Berg, and... Uh, I dropped some humanity for this guy because I'm, I'm grateful that he helped me and I'm going to heal as well so I want him to heal back and he doesn't pick the humanity up he just kind of he pops it himself actually did I drop any? 
I assume I might have dropped some, but I might not have. So there's the, the blossom. And we're back again. So it's me and this guy. And I think he was winning uh, the fight previous to this. So the, the interruption uh, might have been to my favour. We'll soon find out as I catch him with that lovely two hand. Extremely useful. You can chain it into a lovely combo as well. So for the people that like to counter hit, you can get them with a nice sneaky second blow. There's the poke. He wings a few parries. He gets ambitious with the swing. I do a couple of cheeky rolls. Come back in. He goes another again for a counter. He needs to be careful here because every time I come close, he's winging counters. And uh, if you wing parries, you're either going to get kicked or you're going to get backstabbed. Because a, a fantastic strategy that doesn't always work and you will get accused of being a fisher when you do it is if you run towards an opponent, a lot of opponents who are experienced will try and parry you because they've got the timing down. But you know that's what they're going to do, you're already thinking that, so instead, run directly to them, fake them out, they wing the parry, you do the backstab. It works a lot. There's a, a second variant to it as well, which I do a lot, and I run directly towards a guy and I kick instead of doing the running attack. And he wings the parry, he gets kicked, and I clip him. And if you can combine the two with actually doing the running attack, you can keep yourself extremely, you know, unpredictable, and people will not have such an easy job of parrying you. But this guy is rolling around, he's got the... He's got the Leo... Uh, not the Leo, sorry. He's got the, the Poise Ring on, the Wolf Ring. And I think he's rocking a similar sword to myself. He's got a, a small, like, buckler-class shield. I think it could be the... the I'm, I can't quite see it. It might be the buckler. But I don't think it is. I think it's the target shield. Can't quite tell because the phantom colours, but... This could be an interesting fight. He's winging parries. We're testing the water. It's back and forth. For the people wondering why I'm not practising with the, you know, the standard fast roll, why am I using the, the Dartwood Grain Ring? It's quite simple, guys. I have a lot of practice with the fast roll on PC, both PvE and PvP. And I want to use the Darkwood Grain Ring and Heavy Armour for as long as I can until it's gone. Because as soon as the patch drops, you're not going to be able to see the, the build that I'm using right now. And uh, that's a shame on some regards, but for every other level, it's brilliant. Because bitches cannot rely on overpowered nonsense anymore. They will have to either learn to play or learn to build a character. That's literally what they'll have to do. If they don't, they're going to get rocked by everybody. And um, it's going to be interesting to see. Back to the tangent, once I have another little sip. Anybody who's been watching my kind of road to competency in PvP of Dark Souls, we're, we've hit Invasion number 22, and I... Oh, we went for backstab, and he got it! Wow! That was laggy, but you knew it was coming, and some, I should have, you know, done the counter strafe. But he got it, I'll let him have it. Oh! It's not too late, folks. <laughs> The fat lady wasn't singing, and we're not finished winging. But, as I was saying once again, get interrupted all the time. The The season of that is actually done, as it stands, because I ran out of cracked eye orbs, and I'm not a dark wraith, and I don't want to go into New Game Plus with that character. So right now, all I can do is host, and I don't want to host in the, in the burg or something with that character, or in the forest, because you've already seen him in a, a lot of different places, and I already have characters for those areas. So what I'm tempted to do is I'm tempted to either build Ezekiel again in like an hour because I have the ability to do that now or I can get one of you awesome people watching right now to, to come into my world and drop me some cracked orbs. I know that Wasted will probably hit me up again because he's amazing and I do have a video series with him coming up so if anybody wants me to watch, uh, wants to watch sorry, me fight some good competition uh, no disrespect to anybody in the Berg or anybody that's you know I've played before that is coming, some organised fights in the Moonlight Butterfly Forest and uh, I must say those videos are awesome, it's a lovely back and forth and you, you should really enjoy them. But there are my options anyhow with Ezekiel. I do have, like I say, a, a whole bunch of different series I'm going to be doing. One of them that's going to be coming is me luring a gank, I'm going to be wearing full giants, I'm going to have a Mask of the Mother, I'm going to have a Havel Shield, I'm going to be the full douchebag. And I'm going to summon another douchebag in, and when we start to gank, I'm not going to help or heal the phantom, so he's going to have to fight on his own. And I'm going to get a whole bunch of different invasions where I, I screw over gankers, basically. Because a lot of people have said that sounds like a great idea, so I'm going to do it. Another idea I want to do is, uh, I think I might host in the forest wearing full havels and the havel shield, and I want to play turtle. I want to literally just see how long I can survive uh, with... <laughs> 
with a shield up, just, just hiding from people. And the only way I can attack is when they try to backstab me, which they will, because it gets really frustrating, and I'm going to counter backstab them. And don't worry, guys, this might not be a hit. It might be absolute, you know, just dog shit and completely boring. But in my head, it sounded funny. And I, I had a couple practice runs the other day, and they were making me laugh just because of how obnoxious it is. Because I kept slow rolling and proper fat rolling. <laughs> just walk, slow walking like a man in full armor, fat rolling, and just watching people get frustrated. So it, it could be quite interesting. Ooh, goes for the parry there with the parrying dagger. I hit him with the clean. Ooh, we trade. I think I got the better of that because mine was the stronger attack. We're both two-handed. We've both got some wicked range, but he does actually have more range than me, so I need to be careful here. But I'm a little bit conflicted about a few things I want to do as well, so please share some feedback of what you'd like to see. And anybody asking why I don't stream, it's because I can't right now, but I'm working on it, guys. Don't worry. Because I'll stream everything, me boys. I don't give a fuck. I'll stream editing if people want to see it. <laughs> I'll stream the whole nine. As I take that dude out and he gets a, a nice bow. Speaking of a full Havel turtle, see what this guy's doing. Ooh, he's actually attacking, so he's not a turtle. We'll see what he does. He's circling for the backstab. <laughs> he doesn't get it. But the, the confliction that I'm feeling is there's a couple of series I want to do. My road to competency has been pretty successful and people have enjoyed it because of its, its honesty. They like to see me lose, they like to see me struggle, and they like to see me succeed. I have no idea who they are, they just do. And I want to do something similar, but I want to do something different at the same time. And there's a few ideas I could do. Uh, one idea I had was literally, you know, the progression of me going from zero humanity to 99. And when I did a little bit of research on YouTube, there's already a series done by somebody like that. And his name is Maximum Donut. He's a pretty awesome Australian commentator who plays Dark Souls. And he does the Road to Humanity series. So I might email him and say, Yo, dude, can I use your idea, promote you, and do a Maximum Donuts Road to Humanity series if people would like to watch it, which is one option. Uh, oh, well, look at this douchebag. I assume he got impatient and killed that guy because how long the fight was taking. And I don't come to the Berg to gank, so I'm never really in a, in a you know an, an anti-gank mood, sorry. And people like this just annoy me because he's got zero poise. He knows what he's doing. I go for the the parry. I can't get the timing. I go for the backstab and he, he kills me with the buff. And who are those fucking people that do that? Why even come to the fucking Berg if you're going to be that guy? That full Havels dude is obviously new to the game and you come and do that to him. It's, it's This community, everybody praises the Dark Souls community for how awesome it is. And don't get me wrong, guys, it is awesome. But there's another side of it that is a complete and utter fucking abomination. And that guy right there is one of them. But back to topic, so uh, another idea I could do would be literally a road to getting at level 3 in a Covenant. So it could be, you know, Forest Covenant or Forest Bro, as some people call it, you know, Road to Forest Bro Enlightenment or Forest Bro Ambassador or something. And this could work with any Covenant. It could be Dark Moon, it could be... Well, Dark Wraith doesn't really work, because... Although I suppose it could, in, in essence. But very similar idea, and you'll, you'll, you know, it'll allow me to mix things up. I'm also going to be doing series as where... So, you know the prostration gesture? I don't really get it. I assume I fought this dude before, and I assume I wanted to fight him because I just jumped up in the air. But the way that this has been edited, the crossfades kind of get rid of the names. Because uh, I don't know if you've noticed, but a, a lot of the duels link up bows. When I bow at the end, it should transition into the bow of the next fight. And uh, I've not done it subtle, uh, subtle enough for it to, to link awesomely, like a you know like a match cut. But it's. It's interesting on the eye enough to be competent because I need to knock these out quickly and I can't get too, you know, fancy with my editing because there's just no real need. Goodness me, that's a big jumping attack, that one. And I don't actually think that is a jumping attack. I think that's a heavy attack, so it can be parried. And he's, he's using it, but that's the problem with using such a, an over-ambitious attack. If you don't land it or you don't dead-angle it, you can be in trouble. As I bring out some pyromancy, toss him his way, and he does a running attack. Look at the recovery. You see, a lot of people might look at that as, you know, poor conduct, just backstabbing him all the time. That's what you do against somebody with such a big weapon. You know, if you, if you can't get the, the setup parry, if you can't, you know, keep poking away. 
best thing to do, guys. I mean, look at that. How can you fuck with a weapon that hits you at that range? <laughs> it's madness, that axe. It really is. It is easy to parry, but if you fuck that parry up, good luck, because that stun lock's coming. <laughs> and I do apologise about that noise. My chair is fucked, and I need a new one. Uh, this guy comes in waves. No idea who he is. We'll soon find out if I win or lose. So he's getting a bit spear happy. I wave at him. Everybody knows my distaste towards spear players. It's not because I think they're bad players, it's just because spacing and a spear are some of the most frustrating fights you'll ever be in. If you're not going to poise backstab them, or spam combustion, or just, you know, win the trades or parry, you're in a lot of trouble. And if, the, and if a spear user is smart enough, you'll probably never get the parry, because he'll just be too unpredictable and he'll just keep nicking you. Ooh, he's going for parries himself though, and it does leave him open as he does the two-handed poke, and he does a second two-handed and then flips away. Like, spears are going to be much more interesting when they don't have the Darkwood Grain Ring, because the, the iframes on this ring are insane, and I love them for PvE, I love them for PvP. Ooh, we trade again, and I can't quite tell who's getting the better, because I, I, I don't... I don't really know how to judge the, the amount of life you lose, but I grass again. He goes to grass, but he doesn't need it, which is hilarious, because when your opponent grass, your first, your first thought is you need to grass, and uh, he didn't, which I thought was quite awesome. But I'm, I'm getting a bit low on life. I'm not too sure if I'm using the red tear stone. He goes for the quick parry, misses, does the rolling attack, flips back on me two hands, does a quick thrust, chains them a little bit just in case I get over eager, goes to grass, I back out so I don't, don't hit him during that animation. I'm a, ooh, a bit tentative. I knew that attack was coming, but my parry was a little bit late, so I got the partial. And that is a very difficult move to parry, that, that rolling spear strike. It's, it's very fast, and... Oh, I get a quick hit in there with my painted guardian sword. I go for a, to try and slice his arm. It doesn't work. He's, I don't know if he's getting a little impatient with the thrust, but it doesn't really matter because they're working. And, oh, he gets some major counter damage on me there, so I'm not using the red tear stone. Uh, which tells me I'm using Fap and Darkwood Grain Ring. And you can tell by the yellow, the yellow arrow. <laughs> the yellow arrow, sorry. But good fight, dude. You won it fair and square. Ooh, this guy's using a, an Iato. And he's also not using the Darkwood Grain Ring. He's got uh, low poise, so he's compensating with the Wolf Ring. And he's also using what looks like a, perhaps a Target Shield esque, buckler esque shield. So this is a dude who knows what he's doing because he's comfortable enough to, 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 to use a build such as this. And I'm thinking that it's probably a, a soul level 100 build. I just get the feeling, because there's a lot of people on Xbox currently getting, you know, prepared for the DLC to drop, and it drops real soon. Right there, I don't know why the kick didn't work. Seems kind of strange to me, but it didn't. As I do a rolling attack and set him on fire, I, I just wish this game were one-to-one. -one. Like, how much bullshit is it that katanas build bleed when they don't even hit you? I mean, what the fuck is that? <laughs> I know there's some strange stuff in this game, but that's one of those where you just kind of... Really? It hit my astral body? What the fuck's going on? Ooh, right there he did the, the awesome looking R2, and I have parried that move before, and I'm not too sure if I was too, too soon or too late on that, but he managed to stay safe. He goes for it again there. That's a really good move to chain into, because if you do a couple of strikes and then chain the heavy, a lot of people will come in to try and punish you thinking you've finished, and you've not. And you get them with some, some serious damage, but there's a lot of evading here, a lot of rolling, a lot of, you know... We're having trouble finding our range, and we, and we trade again. And judging by the damage I did and his life bar, I do think that this guy might be slightly lower than 120. He does the running attack on the katana, which can be parried if he signposts it enough, but some people are really good at hitting you with that move, because they use it enough so that it's not completely easy to predict. As he clips me again, another dangerous trade, and it's moments like this when you kind of get in your mind, like, how do I hit this guy? What do I do right now? And I break his poise, or his, his guard, sorry. And I could have maximized on it, but I didn't, and I get a bit fancy with the painted guardian sword, and it punishes me. I'm extremely low right now, and this is when I should either be winging parries. Oh, I don't know if that was a dead angle. He was moving away from me. If that had been a lock on, that might have been a parry. But good fight, dude. You were uh, you destroyed me. <laughs> well played. Oh, this is interesting. Uh, someone on the comment section for a lot of my PvP video kept asking me, "When's my fight? When's my fight? Where's my fight, dude? This is your fight. Finally uploaded, so you can enjoy it in all your splendor." 
Now, this is a complete and utter demolition from a dual uh, pyro, a dedicated pyromancer, I believe. And the first thing you'll notice is he uses great magic barrier. So if I was to counter his pyromancy with pyromancy, it'll do no damage. And look at him, pyromancy on both hands. This dude is full on rocking the fire. So this is one of those moments where you immediately know this guy's played a lot of Dark Souls to have enough balls to do what he's doing right here. There is a, a non-lock-on manual aimed fireball that nearly clipped me. I'm in for a fight right now, guys. This guy is a good player. He's probably not rocking too much poise. You'll notice he's not using the Dark Green Ring. He's extremely comfortable in his element. And I've never played against a dedicated Pyromancer like this. And every person I've fought who's used Pyromancy has generally been pretty bad. So there's a second Firestorm that I should punish, but I'm nowhere near competent enough at doing it. There's a Chaos Fireball. I kind of wait for it, then roll, and I get lucky on it. I go for the Poke, he casts a Combustion, more Fire Surge. Now you'll notice he's using Fire Surge unlocked. He kind of gets all crazy with it. There's another Fire Tempest. If it leaves Lava, it's a Chaos. No, it's a Fire Tempest. I throw a couple myself because his spell's worn off. It's really high high pace, lots of pyromancies, and I think he's, uh, there he goes, combustion. I think he's got a, a rapier, which would make sense because it's very light and it's very functional. But he goes for the parry, I, I trade with him, get some damage. He, he, I, was, I couldn't even see what happened then, there was a great combustion, there was some flipping, my brain just melted, and I get another clean hit and he goes into red tier stone range. And this is where it's like, this is it. One hit for him, one hit for me. It's pretty much done, and uh, yeah, <laughs> he gets the better with a well-timed combustion, and you see me hit the floor. So good fight, dude. Well fought. Uh, an interesting build to say the least. Really took me by surprise. Uh, unlike this one, which is another guy in the berg using a buff. These are people you'll run into a lot, and you'll notice this guy's lagging. So not only is he using an extremely di uh, dangerous buff, he's lagging a little bit. So You've got to be super careful with these people. He's, he's kind of mid-rolling, though, which is pretty admirable. As he gets some crazy lightning on me, as if I'd just gone Super Saiyan level 2. Kind of testing the waters, trying to get some cheeky pokes. He knows I'm going to do it, so he's coming in for the parries, but he was far too uh, distant from me then to get a, a decent parry. You need to be so close on the game, guys, to, to get those parries. Like, I don't understand this too much about being this tentative with a buff. I know he's using, like, a rapier-class weapon. For all I know, it, it could be uh, something like an S-Stock, but I don't think it is. I think it's a rapier. Uh, I believe it's Rickards, or Ricard, as people call him. Uh, we'll soon see. Can't quite tell on this tiny monitor, but someone will correct me, because people love to tell me what weapons they are, because they think that I don't know the difference between them, when really this preview window is extremely low res, so it's difficult to see at times. But he, he now changes to a spear. I don't know why I said Spear so strange that I kind of turned into Nicolas Cage for no reason. But this is when the fight gets interesting, and right there is his awesome moonwalking. Uh, because we're winging parries, he's, he's using extremely safe weapons, and... Uh, I'm, ooh, pull out the, the Man Serpent Greatsword and get 730 damage. That came out of nowhere. I'm quite impressed with that. I quite like that. And for the people that are curious why I'm using what I'm using... Uh, I was muled all the weapons in the game, every element, all of them max, so I'm experimenting with, you know, just different sidearms, different unique setups of things. Uh, don't get me wrong, some of the setups I'm using are far from, you know, as unique as I, I try to believe they are in my head, but I'm having fun with trying weapons I would never normally use. And uh, that right there looked like it should have been a parry, but I'll let the game off. We've got a dude rocking the standard roll, probably maybe low... Oh, no, he's got the put, uh, the wolf ring on. He's got a mask of the... I think it's the mother. I can't quite see. It's, it's too fast. Uh, and he's using poison resin. And he's using the dingy robes as well, which are a, a really good robe. And that is an S-stock, I believe, from that two-handed attack. So... Once again, you'll notice I'm finding my range. I'm trying to be as evasive. I'm trying to wait out the buff, even though I'm not that afraid of a poison buff. Never underestimate poison, because it can be a bastard, but for for everything else, you know, there's MasterCard and there's there's grasses that you can use to get rid of it. The mosses are, are superb for that if you keep them off hand. This is me getting a little frustrated, so I try and, you know, mix it up a bit by throwing a pyromancy to see what he does. He's run out of his buff, so, you know, he goes to rebuff and I let him, because that's just how I roll. 
The only thing I don't let people do in the Berg is twop. If you start twopping, I'll let you get one, but if you go for it again, son, you're going down. Because the fun thing about Tranquil Walk of Peace is if you put your back against a wall and you're not up against a spellcaster, he's just, just going to try and mash you down and it's an easy parry. But we're trading. He's, he's staying extremely safe with the with the rapier, uh, with the Estoc, sorry. So you'll notice I switch to the Manserpent Greatsword and I start going freehand to try and hit him with some dead angles. Uh, my motivation for this, for people thinking, is this is a frustrating fight because he's, he's, he's hitting me and I'm not hitting him. He's staying evasive, he's playing safe, and he's playing his strategy to the way that benefits his weapon. Ooh, and he... Oh, well played, brother. That was weird, that, because he kind of flinched as he parried me, but he still got the riposte, so I can't complain. Uh, there was probably a million and one things I could have done there. Like I would have liked to have seen me use more great combustions, but I might have been out of them, because when you host, you run out of spells really quickly and pyromancies. But this is a, a Katana user who's rolling around. He's got the Crown of Dusk on, I believe. He just did a, a 360 running attack, and now he's doing some, some 360 pyromancies, so he's obviously pretty experienced. He's got the fast roll, he's got the poise ring on, so this is another guy who's more than capable of kicking my ass, so we'll see how this goes. He pulls out a combustion. I try and clip him, but I think he, he blocks it with a shield. He's doing another you know, high-speed pyromancy. Back to his, his trusty katana. Does the running attack, which you've got to be really careful up close because you'll get lag-stabbed for days with that move. It happens to me all the time. I'm trying to range him. I'm trying to remind him that I have a poke and he doesn't. But every time I've done the poke, he's generally done the running attack and got the better of us. But you'll notice his life is low. He pulls the pyromancy out. I return pyromancy with pyromancy, just like the old saying. Rolls away after the fireball, and I catch him, I believe, with perhaps a dead angle or scrape damage. It's kind of hard to see. If it was a dead angle, it might have done more, but he was on low life, so who knows. But here's a blue in the Berg, uh, Mr. Tiberius. With the looks of his setup, I think he's got a, an offhand. Oh, no, it's not offhand, sorry. It's just a small shield with uh, another rapier, so a lot of rapiers today. Uh, wow, that is definitely a rapier. That looks like Rickards. Yeah, it is. It's got the, the tasty bunch of pokes. He's going for the parry, so I punish him with a kick. Yeah, you, you can't spam parries, guys. I, I can't even say it enough. And I think he went for a backstab then, but it, it cost him because I hit him with, with the pyromancy. Like, parrying is amazing on this game. Don't let anybody tell you any different. The only people that don't parry are people that are playing uh, a very boring version of Dark Souls for me. Because I just, I can't do it. I, I have to parry. It feels too good when you succeed. But that doesn't mean spam it, guys. If you spam it, it's just not going to work. And people are just going to know that you're doing it, and they're going to punish you for it. A lot of inexperienced players do not know how to punish parry spam. I didn't. Look back at some of my early invasions. I just kind of accepted I was going to get parried, and I did. And that's how it... Oh, can he get the... Oh, damn it. Motherfucker, dove away because I was not convinced I was I was going to nail that parry, which is a shame because that could have been a game changer right there. But you'll notice too, if you parry a good player, some of them will go into parry mode to kind of get, you know, tit for tat. It's, it's really funny to watch. As a, I break the guy's guard, but I don't capitalise on it. Sometimes that is a choice of mine because I don't, I don't know, there's a part of me that thinks it's like stun locking and I hate stun locking. You will never see me stun lock unless somebody wants me to do it that is literally the only times you'll see that shit but that is the end of the first part of this session i'll see you in the second one where i'm going to be going over a, a new series that you're more than welcome to join in in and uh, a couple more ideas that i've got floating around my my dark souls brain right now so thanks for watching guys i hope you're enjoying these these, these longer videos and you take care